Hi, my name is Justin Schaff and I run our engineering team here at PatchMyPC. In this video, we're going to be talking about an issue that you might encounter when you attempt to download a third-party software update that's been published into a deployment package within Configuration Manager. So let's go ahead and replicate the issue that you may, you're most likely seeing if you're watching this video. So if we go ahead and select one of our published updates that have not yet been downloaded into a deployment package and choose our package to put it in, we'll leave all the defaults here, download from the internet, next, and then next. Okay, so now we can see the download has failed. If we take a quick look on the error code, we can see it saying failed to download content ID error the cloud provider exited unexpectedly. Now, depending on what version of Config Manager you're running, your console may also display an error message like 404 not found or something similar. Now to actually get details about what's failing, if we go ahead and right click and click on run, and go to our temp directory by typing percent temp percent for our local user, that will go ahead and open up the temp folder. Now, if you're on RDP, it may not be in the root of your temp folder. It may be in a random folder name because of the redirection through RDP. Now within this temp folder, we wanna look at the patch downloader.log. So this is our configuration manager log file that shows any software updates being downloaded into a deployment package. So what we can see here is that the download did eventually time out. And if we take a look at what's actually happening, we can see that it's attempting to download that third party update from our WSOS content folder within IIS. So this is where the update content gets published through our publishing tool SCUP or the SCCM publishing feature. Now we can see the error code that we're getting when we're trying to download this through IIS is status not found or 404. This means that IIS was unable to locate that CAV file for the update that we're trying to download. After the third attempt, we can then see that SCCM returns the error code that we saw here, which is the cloud file provider exited unexpectedly. Now this is a little misleading. I think a 404 probably would have made more sense to return back to your console. Now, if we come back to our console, if we right click that update and look at the properties of it, and we look at the content information, we can go ahead and copy the column that contains the source path where we're attempting to download this. Now, this is also gonna be the same URL that we saw within our uh, patch downloader.log. So we can come in here, we can look at where it's attempting to download that within the WSOS content folder. Now, in the event that it was an actually an ADR rather than you trying to download it from your console, so we'll go ahead and simulate that error. We, we'll go ahead and run our ADR that's gonna try to download this. Now, the patch downloader in that scenario would be within your configuration manager logs on your site server. So here's our installation directory, D Microsoft Config Manager. So it would either be in the logs folder for your site server logs, but we can see it's not here. So it's actually gonna be in the site system log. So if we go back to the root folder where it's installed, it's gonna be in the SMS underscore CCM logs and then patch downloader. So this would be the download attempt under the ADR system context here. Okay, so we, we've copied that download URL. So what we can do here, we can also copy it. We'll go ahead and open up Internet Explorer. And then if we just try to manually browse out here, we can also validate that it's unable to find that published update. So we'll go ahead and close that out. Okay. Now, if we open up IIS, we'll come over to our WSUS administration website for uh, the WSUS install where updates are getting published. And if we take a look at our content directory, we can go ahead and browse out and look at where IIS is attempting to find these files. So if we go ahead and look at that path that we're trying to download, we can see that it's in the CA folder. And we can also see that folder name corresponds to the last two of the file name that we're attempting to download for the update. So if we go ahead and click into that CA folder, what we can notice here is that it's completely empty. So that means that the content has been deleted from the WSUS content folder. So you may want to check whether you have any type of custom maintenance plans that are recurring that may be purging out content from here. Now, another thing that we've seen, we've seen that if you actually put your WSUS content source location and you're pointing that to the WSUS content share, that can also have SCCM automatically delete 
some of the content within the WSUS uh, content folder. So we'll include this query. This would allow you to search out for any of your deployment packages to check whether they're using any WSUS content path or the WSUS update service pack folder. And if they are, you would wanna make sure that rather than saving your deployment packages within SCCM, which you can see here in your console, rather than saving them into the WSUS content, which is really reserved for just the WSUS content itself for EULAs and any third-party updates, you would wanna save that out to like a common source path that is not associated with WSUS. So somewhere else where you may have packet source files, for example. Now, another thing that we've seen that could cause some issues is you may have multiple software update points within your environment. And if you're using a shared WSUS database, SCCM may assign the download path for one of the secondary software update points where you're not actually publishing the third party updates to. And if you haven't properly shared out the WSUS content so that your secondary software update points that are sharing the database are also pointing to a shared UNC on the primary software update point where you're publishing these updates to, that could also result in the files not being found. Now, we have a separate video that goes through configuring a shared WSUS content path if that's a scenario that you think you may be in. Now, for this one, we do in fact see that we did have a sample deployment package pointing out to that WSUS content. So that may be a source that could be causing files to get deleted from WSUS content. So the first thing you would want to do is move that to a non-WSUS content path. So for example, we'll move that to our uh, source folder and we'll create a new one called update package sample. And that's just going to ensure that SCCM is not trying to download content and reference the WSUS content that's really only used for EULAs and third-party updates. Now, in the event that we looked over here, so we looked in our WSUS content folder at the folder that we were trying to download, we can in fact see that update file was completely gone. So that means that it is not available within this primary update uh, content for WSUS. So it's never gonna be able to download this update. So what we can do in this type of scenario is we can republish this update as a new update. To do that within our publishing service, we would right click the product that is failing to download and choose this republish update option. We'll go ahead and choose yes to republish and we'll choose yes that we're gonna supersede any currently published updates for that product. From here, we're gonna go ahead and run a publishing service synchronization, and we'll open up the patchmypc.log file. Within this, we're gonna see that it's gonna republish any third-party updates for that product, and it's gonna append the date for when you publish that update. Now, within our publishing tool, we do also have, have the option to automatically sync our SCCM software update point. So now that those three new third-party updates were published, we can now see that it automatically synchronized SCCM. And at the end of the sync, you can see the new update showing up. So now if we come back to our console, look at our all software updates, we can now see that we have the new republished update showing up with the date appended to them. We can also see that the original updates that we're failing to download were automatically superseded because we enabled that option. Now, if we right click on our new published updates and click on the content information, let's go ahead and copy that and we'll look at this new URL. So now we can see that it's in an EA folder and then we have the cab within there. So if we come back to that content folder, and we look at the EA folder, we can see that the cab file is in fact in the correct place. So if we come back to the console and try to re-download this, it should be successfully now that the update was republished. There we go. So we can see the updates have now downloaded and we can then deploy them. Now, in the event that the republished update still did not create the cab file for the downloaded update within the WSUS content folder, there could be a different WSUS misconfiguration. So if you validated that the uh, download URL is not pointing to a secondary software update point, and you validated that you don't have any custom cleanup scripts that could be going in and deleting the content, the next thing that we can attempt to do to resolve this is we can simply run a WSUS command to move the content, and then we can move it back. So if IAS is in fact pointing to the correct location that you expect updates to be published for your content folder, we'll go ahead and do a temporary move. So if we go ahead and create a new folder, we'll call this WSUS temp and leave it at the root of the J drive. We'll go ahead and copy that path. 
we'll open up a command prompt as admin. We're gonna then CD into the program files, update services, and then the tools folder. From here, we're gonna have a wsusutil command. The wsusutil move content will allow us to move the wsus content folder on this server, and we're gonna point it to that new temp path. And we wanna make sure that we append a skip copy parameter so that it doesn't attempt to copy any of the current data within wsus content to the new folder because we're gonna essentially move this back and this can resolve some issues where update content may not be uh, published correctly. And then we're gonna give it a log location. So we're gonna call it wsustempmove.log at the root of C. We can now see the move command has completed. So if we open up the registry and look at software, Microsoft, update services, server, and then setup, and do a quick refresh here, we can see that the WSUS content folder is in fact pointing to the new temp path that we defined here. Now, if we go ahead and go to IS and do a quick refresh, we can also see that the content here, if we look at the folder path, is also correctly pointed to the new temp folder, we moved it. So now at this point, since we have a move completed, we now wanna move it back to the original location. So I'm just gonna go ahead and repaste in my command and we're gonna move it back to just the JWSUS folder. So this is back where it was initially configured and doing that move command to get it back can sometimes fix different issues where publishing may not successfully do the cap file. Now this command may take a few minutes within your environment, but it looks like it's already completed. So we'll quickly go back to our registry, do a quick refresh, and we can now see that it's at the JWSUS. If we go back to IIS and do a refresh, we can also see that the configuration is now at the JWSUS as well. So now that we did a move just to temporarily see if this would work, if you were to come back into our publishing tool, we could enable a product or we could right click and republish an update that you may still be having issues with. In our case, we'll just enable something new to see if the content works successfully. So I'll go ahead and run a sync. We'll look at our publishing log. Okay, so we can now see that the updates were republished. If we come back, we can see that the sync is automatically gonna run our WSync manager, and we can see that the new 32-bit versions of 7-Zip are now appearing. So if we come back to our console, do a quick refresh, we can now see that the new 32-bit updates are showing up for 7-Zip. Now, if we go ahead and right-click, we should be able to validate that if the content was in fact published successfully in our WSUS content folder, and we can see that we do in fact have two new folders, which are most likely those new updates, we should be able to download these updates successfully. Okay, and we can now see that it's completed. Now, in the event that neither of these options work for your uh, fixing of the 404 error, just uh, contact us using our technical support page that will be in the description below. Thank you for watching.